Thanks, Eric. Uh, good to see everybody. I know a lot of you, and it's great to have you here sharing this with us. Uh, we've had the great privilege of sharing today with Hub Week and Solve, and we're pleased to uh, have had their partnership in, uh, in crafting the day today. Uh, the MIT Initiative on the Digital Economy explores how people and businesses will work, interact, and prosper in an era of profound digital transformation. We're doing a tremendous amount of research. We've got um, about 20 uh, researchers, 30-odd research projects. We're not just doing purposeful research. We're hosting events where we bring the right people together, not to argue and debate their positions, but, but to understand how we can solve some of these great problems. We also have some educational programs, a visiting fellowship uh, uh, activity, and certainly one of the, the things that we've put the most resources into is the Inclusive Innovation Competition. You know, Eric and Andy have been great leaders uh, of, of this, and Eric um, alluded to the fact that we control our destiny. Andy's comment is usually, we ain't seen nothing yet. <laughs> and Eric's comment usually is, we control our own destiny. And I think a lot of the companies here today will show us a, a guiding light on how we can uh, in, indeed own our own destiny. And uh, last but certainly not least, um, this event would uh, not have been close to, to, to what it is without the effort of Devin Cook. Uh, she's a Sloan alum. Uh, she's worked tirelessly for the last uh, uh, for the last year plus, and we're so pleased to have had her. She's done an awesome job, so please give her a, a round of applause. Oh, thank you. Thank you, David. <laughs> thank you, David, and thank you, everyone, so much for being here tonight. And perhaps more importantly, thank you all for the hard work and energy that you've put into uh, making this event possible, with a particular emphasis, from my point of view, first on our finalists. Um, we saw such an incredible outpouring of incredible organizations through the inclusive innovation process. We had 243 total applications, and as Eric sort of alluded to, we had no idea what an incredible outpouring of enthusiasm there really would be for this concept of inclusive innovation and for giving away a million dollars to inspire the next generation of inclusive innovators and, frankly, to celebrate those that are already doing such an amazing job. And as we thought about the structure for this competition, um, we did look very closely at the inclusive innovation landscape and uh, what's going to need to happen in our economy to ensure that more people really benefit from innovation and feel more included in our economy, and perhaps even more importantly, have a brighter future of work. Because we were really here focused on middle and base level income earners and making sure that they have opportunities for themselves and for their families. So as we looked at those trends, what we saw were four key things emerging. And this is what we shaped our four competition categories around. So the first was the skills category. How do we reskill the workforce for the opportunities of the future? Two is the matching category. How do we match qualified individuals with open opportunities for work? Three was new models. How do we create new operational practices, new business models to revolutionize the workforce? And lastly, humans and machines. How do we augment human labor using technology? And as we saw these applications roll in, we also saw some even more unusual organizations um, bubble to the surface. And for these, you know, they were showing new ways to push the boundaries of inclusive innovation that fell potentially a little bit outside of some of those categories. And our judges wanted to recognize them with some judges' choice awards. So those are the categories of awards that you're going to see awarded tonight. And perhaps most importantly, you know, we are recognizing all of these inclusive innovators, um, but we also had an incredible pool of judges who reviewed all of these applications, over 70 uh, core judges from the nonprofit, for-profit, um, public, journalism sectors, really across the board, looked meticulously at each of these applications. And then we had a champion committee that looked at these 24 finalists and ranked them. And from that ranking process, we identified four, four grand prize winners, one in each of our four categories. So tonight, we will be revealing those grand prize winners to you, and they will go home with $125,000 apiece. So we are really thrilled about this. And can't wait to get started. So I have the distinct honor of being able to present the first award this evening. So without further ado, I will change roles and walk to the podium. <laughs> So this evening, the first award that we are very pleased to present is the Judge's Choice Award for the Visionary category. Now, at first glance, 
Some intractable economic challenges really seem impossible to surmount. And yet a truly visionary organization sees these issues not as a challenge, but as opportunities to affect dramatic change in the lives of millions of people. And all of our IIC finalists are doing just that. Um, and their groundbreaking and advanced thinking really exceeds the promise of previous solutions that benefit working people. Yet the IIC judges have identified one finalist organization in particular whose visionary approach allows it to address a critical global issue, financing for micro, small, and medium-sized en enterprises. So the organization focuses on Latin America, where over 20 million micro, small, and medium-sized enterprises, or MSMEs, exist. And although their numbers are high, less than 40% of these enterprises have access to some form of loan or a line of credit. Banks either deny access to the credit, require high collateral, or charge exorbitant interest rates because little information is available on their creditworthiness. Limited financing for micro, small, and medium-sized enterprises means limited growth and no new jobs. So I am pleased to present the IIC Judges a Choice winner in the visionary category to an organization that is solving this, or this challenge, Destacame. And before I invite them to the stage, we'll give them a round of applause. <laughs> Congratulations, thank you. Now we're going to show you the video that, um, before we introduce officially Augusto, that he put together um, to show us what his organization really does. So cue the video. In the Stagame, we can make a difference for Ricardo by allowing him to access credit in fair conditions. By using alternative information, such as how they pay the utility bills and their suppliers. With that information, we create a score that reflects how responsible they are. And with it, they can demonstrate financial institutions they are trustable and creditworthy. By creating a cheaper and more robust financing risk assessment process, we can bring those opportunities to those at the bottom of the pyramid. Thank you very much. So I'm pleased to introduce Augusto Ruiz Teigel, um, who is the co-founder of Destacame. And I'd like to give you an opportunity to share this. So what is it that you think makes Destacame so visionary that our judges selected you for this award? Yeah, well, just to repeat what I said in the video, so uh, no financing means no growth, and no growth means no new economic opportunities. So we want to help all those middle and low income sectors to get financing so they can grow in the new digital era. Great, thank you so much. And how is it that you're actually um, creating these credit scores for the MSMEs? So we use alternative data uh, gathered from uh, credit-like services such as utilities, telecoms, telecoms and uh, suppliers as well. Mm -hmm. So with that we create a score and that score has proven to be very uh, predictable. So a good payer in the stack I made today mm -hmm. uh, has 50% less uh, is 50 percent less likely to default than the average rate. Mm -hmm. And though I didn't prep you for this question, you've scaled really rapidly. So how many users do you have now? Yeah, we have over uh, 100 thousand users. Mm -hmm. We've been growing at 40 percent per month uh, during the last year, and we expect to grow, keep growing, and expand the the model into Mexico. Mm -hmm. and, and Keep doing it, excellent, know? excellent. <laughs> well, Thanks. with that, before you go, <clears throat> I'd present you with this 3D printed trophy awesome. <laughs> using technology wow. to celebrate right. technology. Right. There you go. Thank you. Congratulations. Yeah. <laughs>